Okay guys, so base excision repair is kind of very very easy. So we are talking about here base excision repair, right? It is very very easy and we have talked about the methyl mismatch repair, remember? Now uh, in methyl mismatch repair, normally it occurs when there is a mismatch between the bases. So let's say a uh, wrong base is added, right? So in that case, we need to replace the base. That means normally adenine pairs with thi thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. So if there is a wrong misincorporation, we use methyl mismatch repair. Now if there is, remember we have already talked about that process, but I am recapitulating that idea that if you are having uh, some kind of bases which are not wanted in your DNA, bases like uracil, which we definitely don't, do not want in our DNA, bases like hypoxanthine, if you are having 3-methyladenosine, those bases can create problem. For example, if you are having uracil, it can cause a transition, right? So let me write, uh, so if you are having unwanted, so unwanted bases are definitely uh, being cleaved out from the DNA, otherwise they can create problem. For example, if you are having a uracil in, in DNA, it can cause a transition mutation, transition mutation. Similarly, if you are having a, a say, hypoxanthin, hypoxanthin, it can cause, uh, it can cause your DNA to be having a mutation and mislead uh, the production of some proteins can be halted. If you if you can have uh, let's say C-methyl adenosine, this this is another uh, unwanted base. C-methyl adenosine. So if you are having C-methyl adenosine, this is even more damaging because if you are having C-methyl adenosine in your DNA during the replication process, if the DNA encounters this C-methyl adenosine base, it replication fork actually stalls. So it stops the replication process, right? So these are very much dangerous type of bases. So if you are having this type of dangerous bases in the DNA, the first job for the cell to cut these bases out of the DNA so that there shouldn't be any damage, right? Shouldn't be any damage further. So for that reason, what we use? Base excision repair. Similarly, the name suggests all that is the base excision repair. So any problem with a single base of the DNA like uracil addition or hypoxanthine or the presence of 3-methyl adenosine, it should be cleaved out of the DNA, right? Now how to cleave that base out of the DNA? The process is very very simple because in this case, let's say, let's say this is the DNA. Now in this DNA, let's say we are having addition of uracil as a misincorporation. So uracil is added. We don't want uracil in DNA, right? So we need to cleave this uracil out of the DNA. So what, what is the process for that? Normally, there is an enzyme called glycosylase. Glycosylase is an enzyme or glycosylase, whatever. So this glycosylase enzyme uh, can be of different type like uracil glycosylase, hypoxanthine glycosylase and 3-methyladenosine glycosylase. So, so those enzymes, for example, if we need to remove uracil, there is an enzyme called uracil glycosylase. Now if we need to remove hypoxanthine, the enzyme required will be hypoxanthine glycosylase. So that's how the nomenclature goes on. But this glycosylase enzyme is having a property to cleave the base out from the DNA strands without cleaving the DNA backbone. So it's a very, very important and unique feature, guys. Right? So for example, let's say this is the strand of the DNA and let's say this is the uracil. Right? So this is the backbone. This blue region completely, uh, this, this is the backbone and these are the other bases added. So the unique feature of glycosylase is to selectively cut this base only out of this place, not cutting the backbone of the DNA, right? It's a very unique feature. Normally we have seen in methyl mismatch repair, we need to cut this DNA from different regions, then we need to fill that gap. But in this case, we're seeing that only the small section of the bad base can only be cut out, right? So here in this case, uracil should be cut. We use uracil here, we use uracil glycosylase. So uracil glycosylase will go and it will cut this uracil out of the place. So uracil, let us take this red color, uracil is cut out. So uracil is cut out. So ultimately it leads to the gap in the base in this particular region, right? 
so here we go everything is there but these are the other hydrogen bonds between the bases but in this region we are having a gap right where the uracil was there previously so there is the gap now in this section this type of site in DNA is an indication that this particular DNA require a repair mechanism right because this is not normal structure of the DNA because normally bases should be paired now we are having a double stranded DNA here single standard condition is not there so what is going on all the other uh, bases are paired but one base is single because one base is cut out by uracil glycosylase here so we need to put a base there or we need to actually repair this this kind of structure because there is no enzyme to put a single base without leaving this backbone right it's not possible so we need to cut this section out then we need to put other new bases actually uh, required bases to this place so how to do that in this case this type of sites are called AP sites right it's called apurinic site or apurimidinic site so apurinic or apurimidinic site so AP sites this is called AP sites in this case, we cleave a uracil out, which is a, uh, which is a pyrimidine type. So, a pyrimidine site will be termed. Normally, if we are cleaving an adenine out or guanine out, it will be termed as a purinic site, right? So, once AP sites it been made, in this case, other so DNA polymerase will be recruited. DNA polymerase one will be recruited. And DNA polymerase 1 using its 3 prime activity, 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity. Remember, DNA polymerase 1 is having 3 activity. One is 5 prime to 3 prime polymerization activity. Another one is 5 prime to 3 prime uh, nuclear, uh, what you can say, exonuclease activity. And 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. Now, in this case, polymerase 1 will be using its 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity to cleave this DNA from this particular region, right? So, before that, remember DNA polymerase can only cleave it if the backbone is nicked. But in this case, the backbone is intact, right? So, we need to nick the backbone somehow. Only after that, we can recruit polymerase. So, before creating, before recruiting the DNA polymerase, we need to recruit another endonuclease into the place. So, what happens from the beginning again? There is a uracil glycosylase. It is cutting the uracil creates the AP site there now then uh, endonuclease called AP endonuclease will be recruited AP endonuclease will be recruited so this is the first enzyme to work this is the second enzyme and this will be the third so AP endonuclease what AP endonuclease will do it will make a nick in this particular backbone it will make a small nick so once it is creating this nick in this region, then DNA polymerase will be recruited. And DNA polymerase using its 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity will cleave this DNA stretch of the DNA out of this place. Now normally, though there is one single base pair base problem, but still when DNA uh, exonuclease activity is going on, it chew off kind of two, three, five nucleotides there because it cannot stop after cleaving one at least. Right, so it is cleaving two or three different uh, nucleotide bases there. So ultimately, after all, this is the bottom strand. Now the top strand, we are seeing some gap generation. Now during this this process, remember, it won't lead to any gap actually. Why? Because this is DNA polymerase, right? Polymerase can have two activities simultaneously going on. One activity is three prime to five prime exonuclease activity to cut the bases out. As it is cutting the bases out in one direction, it is filling the gap too. So it is incorporating new nucleotide sequences into the place, right? And ultimately leads to a simple nick which will be sealed by DNA ligase. So ligase ultimately fill the nick. So remember the process works like this: DNA polymerase acts like three prime to five five prime exonuclease activity to cut this region from this region it start chewing like this start chewing as it is start chewing it is also filling it with new nucleotide sequence and correct nucleotide sequence so that it it is repairing the dna so after this process is done 
it forms a nick because it cannot seal the nick remember on its own requires dna ligase to seal the nick so after all it will recruit dna ligase ligase will seal the nick and ultimately the process of dna repair is complete so the process of base excision repair is completely depend upon it's very simple guys so the very beginning there is the uracil misincorporation of the base when you remove this uracil we use uracil glycosylase which will cut this uracil base without cutting the phosphodiester backbone of the dna so backbone remains intact only uracil is out right after that it it produces this ap site or apipyrimidinic or apiurinic site now once ap site is produced ap endonuclease enzyme will be recruited which will recognize the ap site and make a cut to the ap site in the backbone of dna so once the ap endonuclease cut the backbone of the dna then it will recruit an enzyme called dna polymerase 1 which using its 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity start to chew out those backbone strands several nucleotides like 3 to 5 nucleotides during this uh, cleaving process it is also polymerizing by adding new and correct base sequences there and ultimately leads to a formation of a gap or formation of a nick which will be filled by dna ligase so this is a process of base excision repair and remember base excision repair is also very very important because remember if we end up with the dna uh, inside the dna with uracil hypoxanthine methyl adenosine it will create problems so repair is always required it will reduce the chance of mutation in e coli cell almost kind of 1000 to 10000 fold so that's how much important a dna repair really is normally without the repair system uh, there should be according to uh, our uh, calculations there should be mutation in 1 in 10 to the power 6 which is 1 in a million chance of having a mutation in the dna 1 in 10 to the power 6 nucleotide sequence so in every 10 to the power 6 six nucleotide sequence there is one chance of mutation or one chance of misincorporation of nucleotide so one chance of mutation but actually the mutation probability is 1 in 10 to the power 9 or 1 in 10 to the power 10 in E. coli so that means it kinds of reduces so the repair machinery inside the cell kind of reduces this this value almost 1000 to 10,000 times that's how much important DNA repair really is right this is the repair of only one base now there is another repair mechanism inside the dna which can remove a multiple base because if it forms any kind of lesion in the dna it can just leave that section of 20 to 25 base pairs they just cut that out and incorporate a new uh, actual correct base base pair or bases that is called nucleotide excision repair we'll be learning that in the next video thank you